Merchant of Venus. This is the fifth video in this regard on my channel. Gratiano and Salerio, just from Masquerade Enter. Gratiano, this is the house Lorenzo wanted us to wait at. Salerio, he is nearly late. Gratiano, yes, and that is surprising because those in love are usually early. Salerio, the nerves of villas fly 10 times faster to consummate a new relationship than to make couples together. Gratiano, uh, that's always true. Who leaves a meal as hungry as when he sat down? What horse retraces its steps with as much eagerness as when it went forward? The chase is always the most exciting part. When a ship leaves its native bay, its sails are hugged and embraced by the by the loving wind but when the ship returns it has weather si weather sides and ragged sails damaged and torn apart by the vicious wind salario hey come to lorenzo uh, we can talk about this more later lorenzo enters lorenzo my sweet friends, forgive me for being late. I didn't keep you waiting on purpose, but had to because of my business. When you are the ones trying and steal your wives away, I wait just as patiently for you as you waited for me. Come here. This is the house of the Jew that will be my father-in-law. Hello. Who is there? Jessica enters at the window above, disguised as a boy. Jessica, who are you? Tell me so I can be I can be sure, although I swear I recognize your voice. Lorenzo, it is Lorenzo, your love. Jessica, you are certainly Lorenzo and definitely my love. Who do I love as much as you? And who other other than yourself? knows that I am yours. Lorenzo, Haman, and you yourself both know that you are mine. Jessica, here, catch this box. It's worth the effort. I'm glad it's dark out so you can't see me. I'm very ashamed of how I look in my disguise. But love is blind and lovers cannot see the little faults in their relationship. If the good Cupid himself would blush at how ridiculous I look disguised as a boy. Lorenzo, calm down. Uh, she must be my torchbearer. Jessica, what? I am supposed to hold up a candle so you can see my shameful appearance. Speaking of light, my behavior is a little too light on morality. The torch bearer brings things to light, my love, and I should be kept hidden in the shadows. Lorenzo, you are hidden, sweetie, in the lovely disguise of a boy, but come here at once. The night is going by quickly, and they are, they are waiting for us at Vasanio's feast. Jessica, I'll make sure the doors are securely closed and get some more money and then I'll be with you right away. Jessica exits above. Gratiano, I swear she is too gentle to be a Jew. Lorenzo, call me crazy, but I love her with all my heart. If I, if I am any judge of character, she is wise. And if my eyes are trustworthy, she's beautiful. Moreover, she has proven herself to be loyal. And since she is wise, beautiful, and loyal, she will always be in my heart. Jessica enters. Are you here now, gentlemen? Let's go. 
our fellow mud goers are waiting for us at the masquerade. Lorenzo, Jessica, and Salerio exit. Antonio enters. Antonio, who is there? Gratiano, Sir Antonio. Sir Antonio? Antonio. Ah, Gratiano. Where is everyone else? It's uh, nine o'clock. Our friends are all waiting for, for you. There is not going to be a masquerade party tonight. The wind is blowing. So Masanya is going to get on his sailboat right away. I have sent 20 men out looking for you. Gratiano, I'm glad. I don't want a party. All I want is to be on a way sailing tonight. Gratiano and Antonio exit. Shakespeare, okay, had trumpets playing. Portia enters with the Prince of Morocco and their attendants. Portia uh, to a servant, go open the curtains and reveal the casket of this noble prince. The servant opens the curtain, revealing three caskets, a gold one, a silver one, and a lead one. To Morocco. Now choose one of the caskets, Morocco. Uh, the first one, made of gold, has this inscription, hello, who chooses me, I will get what many men desire. The second one, made of silver, has this promise written on it. And who chooses me, I will get as much as he deserves. The third one, made of dull lead, has this blunt warning. He who chooses me must give up and risk all that he has. How will I know if I choose the right casket? Portia. One of them has my picture inside. Friends, if you choose that one, then I'm yours. Morocco. May some God help me make my choice. Let's see. I look over the inscriptions again. What does the lead casket say? He who chooses me must give up and risk all that he has. Must give up for what? for some lead, risk everything for lead. This casket's inscription doesn't bode well. If I am going to risk everything, it must be in hope of a big reward. A golden mind doesn't stoop to trash. I won't risk or give up anything for lead. What does the silver one? With its uh, pure hue, say, uh, he who chooses me will get as much as he deserves. As much as he deserves. I need to think this over for a second and consider how much I deserve. If I were to judge myself, I'd say that I deserve quite a bit, but quite a bit might not be enough to marry the lady but I do myself a uh, disservice, disservice in understanding, underestimating, in underestimating what I deserve. I deserve her by my noble birth and my wealth, by my good graces and a good bearing, reading. But even more than this, I deserve her because of my love for her. What if I didn't consider the other caskets and choose and choose this one? Let's see the saying and great on the gold one more time. He who chooses me I will get what many men desire. Well, uh, that's the lady. 
and the whole world desires her, they come from four corners of the earth to kiss her, this living saint, the deserts of the Middle East and the vast wild of Arabia are practically highways now for princes to come see beautiful Portia, the kingdom of the ocean, whose waves rise to touch heaven itself, cannot stop the foreign suitors from coming. They cross the sea as if it is a little stream under the sea, beautiful Portia. One of these three caskets contains her heavenly picture. Is it likely that ugly lad would contain her? I'd be damned if I thought of such a horrible thought. It would be too terrible to enclose her beauty in such a casket. Or is she in the silver one worth ten times less than gold? What a sinful thought! Such a rich gem as she has never been set in anything worse, hand, worse than gold. In England, there is a gold coin that is stamped with the figure of an angel, but that is just engraved on top of it. Here, an angel lies within a golden bed. Give me the key. I choose this one and hope that my choice will bring me joy. Portia, giving Morocco a key. And there, take it, prince. And if my picture is within, then I'm yours. Morocco opens the golden casket. Morocco, oh, hell, what is this? A skull, and inside the key socket is a scroll. I'll read what's written on it. He reads aloud, all that glitters is not gold. Heard this, you have often heard this saying, many a man has given up his life just to see my outside, my outside, but golden tombs contain nothing but, but worms. If you had been as wise as you were bold, with the strength of youth in your body, but the good judgment of old age in your mind, you wouldn't have chosen this casket. Farewell. Your attempt to get Portia is unsuccessful and all wasted effort. Now, goodbye, passion, and hello, cold solitude. Portia, goodbye. My heart is too sad to take long in living. This is how losers depart. Morocco and his attendants exit. Portia, good riddance, good riddance, close the curtains, back up. I hope everyone of this complexion will choose that cask. Portia and her attendants exit. Salerio and Solano enter. I saw Bassanio sail away and Gratiano went along with him and I'm sure that Lorenzo is not with them in the ship, in their ship. Solanio, that villainous Jew, cried out for the Duke's help and got him to search Bassanio's ship. Salerio, he came too late, the ship had already set sail, but it was explained to the Duke that Lorenzo and his loving Jessica were seen together in a gondola. Besides, Antonio told the Duke that those two were not with Bassanio in his ship. Solanio, I have never heard of passionate outburst of rage as confused, strange, outrageous, and variant as that 
dog and the Jew uttered in the streets. He was yelling, my daughter, oh, my, my ducats, oh, my daughter, she's anyway a bit a Christian. Oh, my ducats that now belong to a Christian. Justice and the law, my ducats and my daughter, a sealed bag, two sealed bags of ducats, double the ducats stolen from me and by my own daughter and jewels, two valuable precious stones are stolen by my own daughter, justice. I must find the girl, she has the jewels with her and the, and the ducats. Salerio, all the boys in Venice were following him, crying out his jewels, his daughter and his ducats. Salonio, Antonio had better be careful not to miss the deadline for paying Shylock back or else he will pay for this. Salerio, yes, indeed. I talked yesterday with a French person who told me that there was a shipwreck in the narrow waters that separate England and France involving a ship from our country carrying floats of spices. I thought of Antonio when he said this and wished to myself that the ship was not his. Salania, you'd better tell Antonio what you heard, but tell him gently, it may upset him. Salario, no gentleman, no gentleman is as kind as Antonio is. I saw Bassanio and him leave each other. Bassanio told him he would come back quickly and Antonio replied, don't, don't rush, don't muddle your business for my sake, Bassanio, but rather stay as long as you need to and don't worry about the agreement I have with the Jew. Be of good cheer and devote your thoughts to courtship and how as you can best show your love there. And as his eyes filled with tears, he turned his face and put his hand out to shake Bassanio's hand with much affection. And that was how they parted. Salania. I think Vasanio means the word to Antonio. Please, uh, let's go and find him and cheer him from his con constant melancholy uh, with some uh, good times or something. Salerio, yes, let's go then. Let's go do that. Salerio and, Sol and Solanio exit. Nerissa and a servant enter. Nerissa, hurry, hurry, please. Hurry, hurry, please. Close up the curtain right now. The Prince of Aragon has sworn his oath and now comes to make his, make his selection. Trumpets play, the Prince of Aragon, his attendants and the Porsche enter. Portia, behold, there are the caskets, noble prince. If you choose the one that contains a picture of me, we would get married right away. But if you make the wrong choice, you must leave here immediately, my lord, without saying another word. Aragon, I am bound by oath to do the following three things. First, I can never tell anyone with casket, it was that I chose. Second, if I fail to choose the right casket, I will never again coach a woman in marriage. And third, if I fail to make the right choice, I must immediately be gone and leave you. Portia, everyone must agree to these conditions who wants to risk it for me as worthless as I am. Aragon, 
I am prepared to take the risk. May fortune smile upon the hopes in my heart. Gold, silver, and a lowly, lowly lead. He who chooses me must give up and risk all that he has. Youth need and to look better before I give up or risk everything for you. What does the golden casket say? Mm, let me see. He who chooses me will get what many men desire. What many men desire, many may refer to the majority of fools who choose things based on appearance, trusting their eyes alone. But you can't see a through to what's on the inside. Those people are like mallet birds who build their nests on the outer walls obsessed with the outside i will not choose that which many men desire because i will not join in join in with the common barbarous multitudes well then on to the silver casket let's see again what your inscription says he who chooses me will get as much as he desires, deserves. I agree with this saying because uh, who should attain good fortune and honor if they don't deserve it? No one should pretend to have more dignity than they really deserve. I wish estates, degrees, and jobs were not gotten corruptly and that honor was given out based on merit. If that were the case, many great men would be put in their place, and many men who are in command now would be commanded by others. How many problems would be transformed into common presence How many noblemen, how many noblemen would be transformed into common peasants? And how many commoners would now shine with honor? But anyways, it's time for me to make my choice. He who chooses me will get as much as he deserves. I know what, what I deserve give me the key for this one and i will unlock my fortune here right away aragon opens the silver casket portia you've taken too much time for what you found inside aragon what's here the portrait of an idiot holding something for me to read i will read it how different this picture is from the one of Portia. This is so unlike what I hoped for and what I deserved. He who chooses me will get as much as he deserves. Did I deserve nothing but a fool's head? Is that my price? Do I deserve no better? Portia, if I were to answer you, it might defend you. Aragon, what does it say here? He reads aloud, this silver chest was put in the fire seven times. The kind of judgment that never chooses wrongly can withstand as many tests. Some people kiss shadows and only have a shadow of bliss. There are some foolish people covered with silver here and their casket had a silver covering as well. Take whatever wife as you want to bed, but this fool's head will always be yours. So go away, you must leave. The more time I linger here, the more foolish I'll seem. I'll seem. I came to Pu Portia with the head of a fool, and now I live with two fools' heads. Goodbye, sweet lady. 
I keep my word and bear my misfortune patiently. Aragon and his attendants exit. Portia and his gone like a moth that is flown too close into the flame. These fools think I think it over so much. And when they finally choose, their wits aren't enough and they lose. Larissa, the ancient saying is true, death and marriage are matters of destiny. Portia, come on, close the curtain, Larissa. A messenger enters. Messenger, where is my lady? Portia, I'm here, what do you want? Messenger, Madam, a young Venetian has come unto your gate. He has gone ahead of his lord to tell you that his master is approaching. He brings a kind greetings and in addition to niceest, nice, niceties, to niceties and courteous manners, uh, valuable gifts. I haven't yet seen an ambassador of love as likely to succeed as this one. This man coming ahead of his lord is sweeter than a warm April day showing summer is near. Portia, enough please. I am worried. Next, you will tell me he is your cousin. Since as you praise him so much, come on, Larissa. I want to see this messenger of Cupid, who comes with such good manners. Larissa, God of love, please let it be Lasagna. Larissa, Orsa, and the messenger exit. Salanio and Salerio enter. Salanio, what news is there from the Rialto now, Salerio. Well, there is an unproven rumor around, around here that Antonio has lost a ship carrying many riches on the England Channel. It supposedly happened on a very dangerous, deadly sandbar, I think they call the Goodwins, where he remains of many tall ships lie buried. That is, if this gossip turns out to be true. Salania, I hope this rumor is as false as a woman uh, who tells her neighbors she has wept over the deaths of her third husband, but it is true at the risk of talking talking your ear off, that the good Antonio, the honest Antonio, oh, I wish I had something to call him that was good enough to be next to his name. Salerio, come on, get to the point. Salania, mm, what are you saying? Oh, the point is that he has lost a ship. Salerio, I hope this is the last of his losses. Salania, let me say amen now that the devil doesn't interfere with that prayer because here comes the devil himself in the shape of a Jew. Shylock enters. How are you, Shylock? What is the news among the merchants? Shylock, you knew about my daughter's plan to run away and no one knew better than you. Salerio, that's for sure. For my part, I knew the tailor who made the wings she flew of her own. Salania, and as for Shylock, he knew his little birdie had wings and he knew that she was likely to leave the nest. Shylock, she is down to running away. Salania, that's certain if if you, the devil, here, and devil are her judge. Shylock, I can't believe my own flesh. 
and the blood rebelled against me. Salania, no way, you old thing. You can't control as your flesh even at your age. Shylock, I mean, my daughter is my own flesh and blood. Salaria, there is a greater difference between your flesh and hers than between coal and ivory, and a greater difference between your blood and hers than between red and white, white wine. But tell us, have you heard whether Antonio has suffered any losses at sea or not? Shylock, with him I have more bad luck. He is a bankrupt, reckless with money, and he doesn't dare show his head in the in the realtor. He is a beggar who used to be smug in the market. Let him pay attention to his obligations. He used to always insult me for charging interest. Interest. Well, let him pay attention to his obligations. He used to lend money as a Christian favor. Uh, let him pay attention to his obligations. Salerio. Well, I'm sure that if he doesn't pay you back, I should want to actually take his flesh. What would that be good for? Shylock. I could use it as bait for fish. If it will feed nothing else, it will at least feed my revenge. Half a million times he has disgraced me and hindered me. He has laughed at my losses, mocked my profits, scorned my people, messed with my business deals, turned my friends against me, and then cursed my enemies. And what is, he, what is his reason for all this? I am a Jew. Does a Jew not have eyes? Does a Jew not have hands, organs, senses, affections, passions? Are we not fed with the same food, hurt by the same weapons, affected by the same disease, healed by the same medicines, warmed and cooled by the same winter and summer as Christians? If you stab us, uh, do it not to bleed. If you tickle us, uh, do it not laugh. If you poison us, uh, do it not die. And if you wrong us, should we not take revenge? If, if we are like you in all the other ways, we will resemble you in terms of revenge too. If a Jew wrongs a Christian, what does he do? He takes revenge. If a Christian wrongs at you, what does the Jew do following the Christian example? Why he should take revenge? I will follow your own willingness example and I will probably outdo my teachers. A man sent by Antonio enters. Man. To Solanium, and Salerio, gentlemen, my master Antonio is at his house and wishes to speak with both of you. Salerio, we've been all over the place looking for him. Tubal enters. Solania, here comes another two. There couldn't be a third to match these two unless the devil himself turned into a Jew. Solanium, Salerio, and the man exit. Shylock. How are things, Tubal? What is the news from Genoa? Have you found my daughter, Tubal? I often found a word of her, but I couldn't find her. Shylock. Well, there you go. One of the diamonds she took cost me 2,000 tickets in Frankfurt. Our people are cursed, but I've never felt the curse until now. 2,000 tickets lost in the diamond. 
plus the other precious, precious jewels. I wish my daughter were dead here at my feet with the jewels in her ear. I wish she were dead in her coffin right here and the ducats were inside it with her. There's no news of, of them. All right then. And I don't even know how much I am spending to search for them. Loss on top of loss. The thief took so much, and now it takes even more money to find the thief. And still, I have no satisfaction and can find no revenge. No one feels bad luck, remorse, or grief as much as I do now. Tubal. Other men have bad luck too. I heard in Genoa that Antonio. Shylock, what, what, what? He's had some bad luck, bad luck. He's had some bad luck, bad luck, too bad. Antonio has lost a ship coming from Tripoli. Shylock, I thank God, I thank God. It's, is it true? Is it you, Tubal? I spoke with some of the sailors that escaped the shipwreck. Shylock, thank you. Good Tubal, good news, good news. Ha ha, good news. Heard in Genoa. Tubal, as I heard your daughter spend 80 ducats in one night in Genoa. Shylock, you stick a knife in my heart. I will never see my gold again. 80 ducats in one sitting, 80 ducats. Tubal, some of Antonio's creditors came up with me to Venice and swore that he has no choice but to four feet on his lawn. Shylock, I'm very glad to hear that. I'll keep after him. I'll torture him. I'm glad about I'm glad about this. Chubal, one of the, one of them showed me a ring that your daughter gave him in payment for a monkey. Shylock, damn her! She was torturing me. Chubal, by telling me this, that must have been my turquoise ring. Leah. Leah gave, gave it to me when I was a bachelor. I would not have given it away for a whole jungle full of monkeys. Too bad. But Antonio is certainly ruined. Shylock. Yes, that's true. Very true. Go and get a police officer for me, too bad. Pay for his services uh, two weeks in advance. I will take Antonio's heart if he four feet on the lawn. If he is no longer around in Venice, I can do what I want with my trading business without his competition. Go, go to Val, and then meet me at your synagogue. Go to Val, meet me at your synagogue, to Val. Shylock and to Val exit separately. Masanya, Portia, Gratiano, Nerissa, and all their servants enter along with the singer. Portia, to Masanya, please, and take your, take your time, wait, wait a day or two before you take the risk, because if you choose incorrectly, then she will have to leave me. So wait a while, for some reason, but not because of love. I don't, I don't think I'd, it's not hate, and that would make me feel this, this way, but just so that I am clear, even though it's not a young woman's place to speak her thoughts, I would like to keep you here for a month or two before I should make a choice. I could tell you what the right casket is, but I've sworn not to. 
I will never tell you the right choice. So there is a chance I should make the wrong choice. And if you do, as you will make me wish I'd sinned and broken my oath not to reveal the correct casket down as your eyes. In looking upon me, they have divided me in two. One, one half of me is yours and the other half is yours. I mean mine. Well, if that half of me is mine, then it is yours too. So all of me is yours. Oh, it's wrong that you are kept from what is yours, although I'm yours. I'm not yet officially yours. Make it so I am. Let Lady, Lady Luck go to hell for this game of chance, not me. I'm talking too much, but I'm doing that I'm doing that just to waste time to draw out and the minutes and stretch out the seconds, keeping you from making your decision. Masanya, let me choose a casket or as it is right, no, I'm in, for in torture. Forcha, in torture, Masanya, then confess what treason as you have committed out of your love. Vasanyu, I am guilty of nothing but some mistrust of it makes me wrong, it makes me worry. I will never be able to enjoy my love. Snow and fire get together, get, go back together than any treason and my love. Portia, yes, but I'm pleased that you are only saying this because you are being tortured. Men say anything about post to by torture. Bosania, promise me my love and I'll tell you the truth. Portia, well then, confess the truth and you will live. Bosania, confess and love. Yes, and then said, what nice torture when my torture tells me the right thing to say to be let go, but now let me try my luck and go to the casket. Portia, let's go then. My picture is locked in one of the caskets. If you truly love me, I shall find it. Nerissa and everyone else stand back. Let some music play while he makes his choice. Then if he loses, he will at least have a swan-like end, dying with the song. To make him really like a swan, I'll cry a river for him to swim and drown in. And if he wins, what will be the point of the music? In that case, the music appears like the flourish that the place of and subjects bow to a newly crowned, crowned king. The sweet sounds that wake up and uh, dreaming a uh, groom at dawn on his wedding day and announce that his wedding that wedding is that his wedding is here. And now he goes to the casket, so looking as noble as Hercules, but more loving when Hercules is used. And the Trojan, uh, Hercules rescued the Trojan princess from the sea monster. I am like that the princess awaiting death, and these people standing by are like the Trojan wife, so looking on with the teary eyes. Go my Hercules, if you live, then I live. I'm much more troubled here watching you. And then as you are uh, doing the deed.
The singer sings a song while Bassanio comments to himself about the casket. Singer singing. Tell me where our ladies come from, the heart or the head. How do they start? How do they grow? All answer, answer. Singer singing. Love starts in the eyes and grows with gazing and it dies in the cradle where it lies. Let us all sound love's death knell. I'll start ding dong bell. All ding dong bell, Bassanio. The appearances of this may be deceiving. The whole world is tricked by fancy appearances. In the cold floor, a Colombian falsity can hide its own evil and a uh, pleasant voice. In religion, a damned, damned mistake can be covered over with a nice issue of blessing and some scripture to justify it. Every vice has some outward appearance of virtue. Many cowards are with disloyal hearts have beards like the brave Hercules and Mars. They go to war even though they have no guts and the end are easily frightened. And think of beauty, which can be bought by the proud, by the pound in the form of cosmetics, which work miracles on nature, making the woman that with most of it the most beautiful, the curly golden locks that are tossed in the wind so nicely and seem beautiful often turn out to be a big, made from a dead person's hair. Appearances are like an inviting shore that leads to a changeless ocean, a beautiful scarf hiding an actually undesirable Indian, Indian beauty. In short, in short appearances can be tricky and often deceive even the voices. Therefore, Therefore, a you gold and solid matter that Midas couldn't eat, I will have nothing to do with you, and I'll have nothing to do with silver either. That failed matter that men pass between themselves as currency, but you humble it, uh, you who threaten more than to promise. Your Plainness moves me more than I can say, and I choose you. I hope I will be happy with my decision. Portia, to herself, all other emotions are flying away. Doubt and trash despair, shuddering to fear, and the green eyed jealousy must moderate my love and restrain my ecstasy. I must rejoice with a good measure and not too much. I feel too overjoyed. I must be less joyous, for I fear that I have an excess of happiness. Masanya, opening the lead casket, what do I find here? The picture of beautiful Portia, what a godly artist has rendered and the image so close to real life. Do the eyes in this picture move, or do they just seem to do as I look around? Here are her lips. Parted by her sugary breath, that such a sweetness that should part such sweet friends. Here in her hair, the painter has been like a spider weaving a golden web to trap men's hearts faster than nets are caught in cobwebs. But her eyes, how could the artist have painted these? 
once he made one of them, I think it's duty uh, would have restricted him uh, so that uh, he could not have painted the other, but my praise wrongs this image because my words fall as short of its duty as it falls short of the real person it depicts. Here is a scroll and summarizes my fortune. He reads aloud, you who choose not based on appearances have good luck and chosen correct. Since you have gained this fortune, be content and don't seek anything more. If this pleases you well and you are happy with your good fortune, turn to your lady and reclaim her with a loving kiss. Want a nice stroll, fair lady, if you will permit it, I come to give you a kiss and thus receive you. As this note instructs me, I am like someone who has competed for a prize and thinks that everyone's applause and shouts are for his success, but isn't quite, but isn't quite sure because he is so stunned and isn't certain whether all this place is for him or not. That is how I feel now. A beautiful lady, about three times more intense. I can't be sure of whether what I see is due until it is confirmed, signed, and ratified by you. Portia. You see me as I am standing here, Lord Vasanium. I wish I were 20 times better than myself. I wouldn't be so ambitious as to wish that just for myself, but for you, I would. And I would wish I were a thousand times more beautiful and 10,000 times richer. I wish I could be infinitely good in virtue, beauty, wealth and offense only, so that she would think highly of me. But all as you get in me is an inexperienced girl, unschooled name, but at least if you are getting a girl who is not too old to learn, and one who is not so stupid that she cannot learn. Best of all for you, you are getting a girl whose gentle spirit is fully committed to yours and is willing to be directed by you as if by her lord, her governor, or her king. Myself and all that is mine is now yours. Just a minute ago, I was in charge of this beautiful mansion, all its servants, and myself as well. And now this house, these servants, and myself are all yours, my lords. I give them to you along with this ring. Don't ever lose it or give it any anyway, or else that will be the sign of the ruin of your love and will give me reason to scold you. She gives Masanya a ring. Masanya. Madam, I don't know what to say, but the very blood in my veins speaks to you, and I am as dumbfounded as a buzzing crowd after listening to a brilliant speech by our beloved friends when everything seems to blend together in unexpected and unexpressed joy. When this thing lifts this finger, then life will leave me. When you see this ring off my finger, feel free to say that my son is dead. Nerissa, my lord and, and lady, it is now time for those of us who have stood by here 
and the sin, our wishes come true, to cry out, good joy, good joy, my Lord and Lady. Gratiano, my Lord Tosanio, and my gentle Lady, I wish you all the joy that I can wish you, so that there is none left for you to wish for me, wish for from me. And when you have your wedding ceremony to solidify your union, I beg that I may be married at the same time. Bassanio, with all my heart, I seek it. If you can find a wife, Gratiano, I think, I thank you, my Lord, because uh, you have found me one. My eyes are as quick as ours, as yours, my Lord. While you you were looking at the mistress, I was watching her maid. You fell in love, and so did I. Just I like you. I had not want to wait. Your fortune dependent on the casket there. And so did mine, as it turns out, while we were standing here, I was going and swearing oaths of love until at last this beautiful woman here promised me her love, so long as your luck held out. Portia, it is true, Nerissa, Nerissa, madam, it is true, if you don't mind, Vasanya. And are you being sincere and honest, Gratiano? Gratiano, yes, truly, my lord. Bassanio, it will be our honor to celebrate our marriage as well at our wedding feast. Gratiano, to Nerissa, we can bet them a thousand tickets that I will have a son before they do. Nerissa, are you want? to stake down that money now? Tatiana, no, we've never been the bet if I take down. But who is this coming here? Lorenzo and his unchristian friend. What is this? And Saverio too, my old friend from Venice. Lorenzo, Jessica, and Saverio, a messenger from Venice Enter. Bassanio, Lorenzo and Solirio, welcome. If I can welcome you here, so soon after winning ownership of this place, to Portia, with your permission, I bid my friends and countrymen welcome, sweet Portia. Portia, and so do I, my lord. They are entirely welcome. Lorenzo. To Bassanio, thank you, Your Honor. I didn't actually intend to come see, see you here, my lord, but I ran into Salerio on the way, and he begged me to come with him, and I couldn't refuse. Salerio, that's a true, my lord, and I have good reason for making him come with me, and Antonio sent this to you. He gives Bassanio a letter. Bassanio, before I open this letter, please tell me how as your good friend Antonio is doing. Salerio, he is not sick, my lord, unless this mind is sick, but he is not doing well either, unless his mind is doing well. His letter there will show you how he is how he is foreign. Masanya opens the letter and reads it. Gratiano to Jessica. Nerissa, cheer up that stranger. Welcome her here. Salerio, uh, let me take your hand. I want to see news to come famous. Now, is good Antonio that royal merchant doing? I know he'll be glad to hear about our dramatic success here. We are like the hero Jason after retrieving the golden fleece. Salerio, I wish you had won enough to replace the that Antonio has lost. Portia, 
And there are some serious matters in that letter and that are making the Sanyo's face go pale. Some close friends of his must have died. Nothing else in the world could affect such a stoic man this much. What could it be something even worse? If uh, you would allow it, Basanya, I am half of you now, and I must be a half of whatever this letter brings you. A sweet Porsche. And these are some of the most unpleasant words that were ever written on paper. Gentle lady, when I first told you of my love for you, I admitted that the only wealth I had was the world, was the blood running through my veins. I was a nobleman by birth and I spoke truly then. And yet, even saying that I had no money was a bit baggery, braggery, as you will see. When I told you that my estate was worth nothing, I should have told you that it was worth less than nothing, for I am in debt unto a dear friend and put him in debt unto his complete enemy in order to support me in coming here. This letter here is like the body of a friend, and every word on it is like a gaping bird spilling out blood. But is this true, Salerio? Have all of his business ventures failed? Not one was successful, not the one from Tripoli or the ones from Mexico and England, the ones from Lisbon, the African coast, or India. Not one of his ships escaped the dreadful rocks that train merchants of fortunes. Salerio. I not one sheep, my lord, and even if Antonio had the money to pay it you back, it seems he wouldn't take it. I've never seen an animal in the shape of a man as greedy as him and as eager to spite another man. He pleads his case unto the Duke every morning and every night and says that if he is denied justice, it would be a disgrace to the state. Twenty merchants, the Duke himself, and the highest ranking Venetian noblemen have all tried to persuade him, but no one can change his mind about the matter of his loan of justice, and Mount Antonio must forfeit. Jessica, when I was with Shylock, I heard him swear to his fellow youth Tubal and just uh, that he would rather have Antonio's flesh than 20 times the amount of money Antonio owes him. And I'm sure, my lord, that he will take the flesh of poor Antonio if the power and authority of the law allow him to. Portia, is this man who is in such trouble, your dear friend? Basanya, he is my dearest friend and the kindest man. He has the best untiring spirit of courtesy and is a better example of ancient Roman honor than any man alive in Italy. Portia, what amount of money does he owe to the Jew? Bassanio, 3,000 ducats on my behalf. Porsche, what is, what is that it? Um, pay him 6,000 ducats and scrap the equipment, double 6,000 and a triple it before allowing a such a close friend to lose even are here on account of Bassanio. First, go up with me into the church so we can finalize our marriage, and then go to Venice to help your friend. You will never lie, lie, 
by my side with a troubled soul, I shouldn't have enough gold to pay 20 times his petty debt. Once it is paid off, I bring to your two friends back and back with you. My maid Nerissa and I will be as chaste as maids and widows. While as you were gone, come on, let's go. As you are going to leave me on our very wedding day. Welcome your friends here and show them a good time. Since it's going to cost me a lot to have you, I will love you a lot. But first, uh, let me hear the letter from your friend. Bassanio, reading the letter aloud, sweet Bassanio, all my ships have been checked. My creditors have become cruel. I don't have much money. I cannot pay the two back. And since once the two takes the flat from me, I will die. All as your debts to me are cleared. If only I can see you before I die. Regardless, enjoy yourself. If your love for me is not enough to take you, come to me. Then my letter should not be either. Portia, my love, forget about everything else and go. Asanya, since I have your permission to go away, I will hurry. But until I come back, I will not sleep on wing. I won't rest at all until we are united or exit. Shylock, Salonio, Antonio, and the jailer enter. Shylock, jailer, keep an eye on him. Don't say anything about mercy. That's the fool that, that lent you money with no interest. Keep an eye on him, jailer. Antonio, just listen to me, good Shylock. Shylock, I'll have what you owe me. Don't try to reason your way out, out of it. I have sworn an oath that I will have what you owe me. You called me a dog without any reason. Well, if I am a dog, then look out for my bite. The Duke will grant me justice. I wonder you not each other. Why should you like him so much to have come outside the jail with him as he asked? Antonio, I beg you to listen to what I have to say, Shylock. I will have what you owe me. I want to listen to anything to say. I'll have what you owe me. So don't say another word to me. I won't be a lenient, dull fool and just shake my head. Sigh and give in to the Christians who plead on your behalf. Don't, don't follow me. I won't listen to you. I will have what you owe me. Shylock exits. Salania, he is the most stubborn beast that ever kept company with men. Antonio, leave him alone. I won't follow after him anymore. Uh, with my useless pleas. He wants my life, and I know why. Often I helped men who owed things to him at the last minute when they begged me. That's why he hates me. Solania, I'm sure that you will never allow him to take the pound of flesh. Antonio, that you cannot deny the law. If he goes against the law, foreign merchants will lose confidence in the justice of Venice, and the city's profit relies on foreigners. So go. I've been so worried and upset that I've hardly been eating anything. I don't know if I even have a pound of flesh to spare uh, to my bloody creditor tomorrow. Well, let's go, Jilla. I pray that the son will come and see me pay his debt, and that's all I care about now. Antonio and Solanio exits. 
exit. Portia, Nerissa, Lorenzo, Jessica, and, and Portia's servant, Balthazar, enter. Lorenzo, madam, if I may say so in front of you, I believe if you have the noble and true goodwill of a good, which is of a god and which is most apparent in way, you are dealing with the essence of your husband. If as you knew the man whom as you are helping, how honest a gentleman as you are sending to live to, how close a friend of your husband he is, then I know as you would be even prouder of what as you were doing than as you are now. Portia, I have never regretted doing good and I will not do so now. Friends who converse and spend time together a lot, who love each other equally, share similar manners and spirit. So I think that this Antonio, being so close to my husband, must be like him. If he is as good as my husband, then it is a small sum of money that I've spent in purchasing his rescue by hellish cruelty, since he resembles my soul, my husband. But I am coming too close to praising myself. Therefore, I won't say anything more. Let's talk about something else. Lorenzo, I have put you in charge of managing my household until my husband returns. As for myself, I have made a secret vow to heaven to live a life of prayer and contemplation accompanied only by Nerissa here until both our husband, both our husbands return. There is a monastery two miles away where we will stay. I ask you not to refuse the duty I have asked of you, which necessity and my love for you compels me to lay on you. Lorenzo, madam, I will obey you with all my heart in your prayer commands, Portia. My servants already know my intentions and will obey you and Jessica in place of Lord Vasanio and me. Farewell until we meet again. May you have, uh, Lorenzo, may you have pleasant thoughts and happy times, Jessica. I wish you, I wish you contentment, my lady. Portia, thank you for your wish, and I am pleased to wish you the same. Farewell, Jessica. Jessica and Lorenzo exit, but Balthazar, be honest and true as I have always found you to be in the past. She gives Malfaza a letter. Take this letter and go as fast as you can to, to, to Padua. Give the letter to my cousin, Dr. Valerio. And bring whatever notes and clothes he gives you and take them with you as you want the ferry to finish as quickly as you possibly can. Don't waste any time chip chatting and just go right away. I will be at Venice before you. Balthazar, madam, I will go as quickly as I can. Balthazar exits. Portia, come on, Nerissa. I have a plan I should not know about yet. Well, I will see our husbands before they even think of us. Nerissa, will they see us? Portia, they will, Nerissa, but we will be dressed as the very thing. Are we currently lack men? I'll 
meant as you anything, I'll bet you anything to that when we are disguised as men, I'll be the more handsome one and I'll carry my dagger. Now, with uh, more manly bravery, with more, more manly bravery, my voice will sound the high pitched like a teenager, not yet a man, and I'll turn my womanly steps into a manly walk. I'll turn my womanly steps in manly walk. I'll talk about fights like a bragging junk man and tell my slides about how honorable ladies sought my love and practically died when I denied them because I couldn't be bothered with them. And then I repent and say that I wish I hadn't caused their deaths. I tell 20 of these little lies and men will fear that I was just a year out of school. I have a thousand of these little tricks and breaks up my sleeve, and that I'll use. Nerissa, are we going to turn to men? Portia, what a question that is. Turn to men for sex? Is your mind in the gutter? Um, but come with me and I'll tell you my whole plan uh, when uh, we are in the carriage waiting for us at the gate. Hurry up because uh, we have 20 miles to travel today. Portia and Melissa exit. And this is the end of this video call on Merchant of Venus. I will keep reading this. I'll make one more video and then it will come to an end. And in the end, the formal request, if you have not yet, please subscribe our channel and press the like and bell button to get the first from us. Thank you for watching. Have a nice time and goodbye.